All right, well, welcome everybody to our next module. This is going to be a stats heavy module, and we're going to learn about p values, false discovery rates, and family wise error rates. But before we do that, we'd like you to thank Computational Medicine at UCLA again for providing us the camera equipment and money for our lunches that we get to eat. Um, all right, so we're going to kind of build our way into p-values. And this is going to be a little bit interactive. So the first thing you need to do is you need to write down a number between 1 and 100. And this number is drawn from the distribution of whatever numbers are between 1 and 100 when people write them down randomly. I wrote down 42. Now, your number is what we're going to call the test statistic. And it is drawn, as I said, from this distribution of like, give me a number between 1 and 100. If we're going to do this a lot of times, people are just going to write numbers down and eventually it'll build up to some sort of distribution. And one question we can ask is, is the number you wrote down more extreme than what you'd expect by chance? Or we can really want to quantify this as like, how extreme is your number? So. The way we're going to write this probabilistically is we're going to say, so there's some number that could be drawn from this distribution of give me a number between 1 and 100. And then you have your number, mine was 42, and this is going to be your observed statistic. And you can ask us, what's the probability that if we were going to draw one more number from here, that it would be more extreme than what you wrote down? So we really have to find what is more extreme. And we can define it as it's a number larger than your number. It's a number smaller than your number. It's a greater absolute distance from zero than your number. We could also maybe, if you want to say, it's a greater absolute distance from 73 than your number. We can come up with a lot of different um, distance metrics. Or you could say it's more or less than expected. Um, so there's a lot of different ways we can say extreme. And we're going to try to define one of these here in a moment. So we've got this question. But in order to actually find out what more extreme is, let's say we do larger. First of all, we have to know, well, what actually is this distribution of 1 and 100? Because what if you wrote down like 4 and everyone else in the world writes down like 1 or 2? Then like your number is actually really extreme if you're looking for numbers larger. But it's probably that's not the distribution, right? So what we can do is we can do what's called getting an empirical distribution. And this just means we're going to go out into the world and we're going to ask a whole bunch of random people what their numbers are. And we're just going to see what do we observe when we ask this question to random people. And so I asked 20 people and they gave me a whole bunch of numbers. And that, what they gave me, is an empirical distribution. It's what we observed in the real world. And so now we can answer this probability question now based on what we've observed. So we can say, OK, what's the probability of observing some random number greater than or equal to your number based on this distribution? And what we're using is we're using this empirical distribution as a proxy for whatever the true distribution is in here, because we don't actually know what that is. But we can guess that if we sample a bunch of people, whatever we see from sampling probably looks a lot like the truth. So in my case, I picked 42, and there's nine values that are equal to or greater than it. So I get 0 0.45 is the probability of observing something larger. And that is, in fact, a p-value. Your, your p-value is just the probability of observing a test statistic greater than or equal to or more extreme than what your statistic was conditional on some null distribution. <clears throat> and in this case, you guys drew your test statistic from the null distribution, and we're seeing how extreme is it relative to the null distribution. So everyone look at what you wrote down. Figure out what your p-value was. So you guys have your p-values. 
Now, let's have a few up here randomly. If, let's say you picked 11, what's your p-value? How many value, what percentage of the values are more extreme than that, or equally extreme? Yeah, 90%, right? And what about 71? Yeah, 25, yeah. How about 98? <clears throat> zero, okay, what does zero mean? If I say something has a p-value of zero, how many values do I expect by chance to ever have a value more extreme than that? Nothing, and that can't really happen, right? Like you all took the SAT and you got like, oh, I'm in the 99.99 99 percentile. I'm pretty sure that's where all of you were. And you're like, why can't I be 100%? And it's because 100% on like the SAT or ACT, however those scores worked, meant that there was literally no one who did better than you. Same way, a p-value of zero says it's impossible for there to be a value more extreme than what you've observed. And that's not really possible because clearly somebody could have said 99, right? So why is it that your p-value for 98 isn't accurate? Yeah, Penny? That's actually a question. <coughs> Does it matter that the probability is that S of n is greater than or equal to S of zero? Like, does the equal to make a difference? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but the technical definition of a p-value is as extreme or more extreme. So in this case, if it were 98, wouldn't it still be 1 because the people observed the 98? So Correct. Oh, but you observe the 98 as your test statistic, and you compare it to your null distribution. So you don't include your test statistic in this observed distribution. Um, yeah, essentially. So yes? I guess back to your question, the empirical distribution has a finite or discrete domain, mm -hmm. and um, it's empirical, so we can't really compare that to a real distribution? I'm not sure. No, you're, you're on the right track. Yeah, so because we only sampled 20 values, we're clearly going to miss some of the values that are actually. Like somebody at some point is going to say 81, right? But we don't see that because we haven't sampled enough. And at some point, somebody is going to say 99. And at some point, somebody is going to realize, well, he didn't actually say integer, so 99.99999. And all these values will eventually get filled in. And so 98 will no longer have a p-value of zero, right? And let's say if I were to do this again, but instead of a 97, I measured a 99, then all of a sudden the p-value of 98 would be different. So my p-value calculation is very much based on how my random sampling works. So if I wanted my p-value to be more accurate under this empirical distribution, what should I do? <coughs> yeah, I should ask more people. If I were to ask like a bazillion people, I would probably know really accurately where 98 falls. And so the more people you sample when getting an empirical distribution, the more accurate your p-value is going to be. So in this case, your p-value is really just an estimate of what the true p-value is. All right. So at some point in your lives, if you stay in statistics or computer science or something like that, you're going to have a job interview. And the person's going to be like, hey, can you tell me what a p-value is? And the only people who will ever ask you this question are people who really, really, really know what a p-value is. And so you really don't want to fumble through an answer because they're going to be like, and you're not hired. So this is, there's a few definitions, but this is one that I like. And this is something that not today, but at some point you should literally just commit to memory so that when somebody asks you what's a p-value, especially if you ever take a class with like Eliezer or Iran or Sriram, when they ask you that, you can like raise your hand and they're going to be extremely impressed. But it's the probability of observing your test statistic or a statistic more extreme than it, given that it is drawn from the null distribution. So that's kind of what we just looked at. Now, who here, if they were asked about a p-value, would say something like, it's the number, and if it's less than 0.05, you reject it in terms of the alternate? Like, that sounds like a p-value? Yeah. This definition, you know what it says nothing about? The alternate hypothesis. So 
your p-value only tells you about the probability of observing your data under the null hypothesis. It tells you nothing about what the alternate hypothesis is.